beautiful thing to have you here. And um, we were thinking we would just take a few minutes to update uh, graduates of the program on how the program has evolved a bit over time. We've never done this before, and I, we thought with um, sort of five years gone by, it was a good idea just to show you some of the changes. Um, and also, if there are visitors, to give you some flavor of what kind of things are in the program as well. Um, so let's see, I need a clickador um, to, to advance the slide. Oh, is, is that to it? Uh, no. I can just say. Uh, I can grab it. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get over here. Um, one thing to emphasize, of course, is that the program is a collaboration between TUC and TDI. Um, Ellen and I sort of represent that in, 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 in person. Oh, thank you, Ellen. That's great. See, this is collaboration. She advanced the slide. Uh, thank you. Um, and so we've got um, the, the, the basics of the program have not changed at all um, in the sense that we have three fundamental goals, uh, envisioning the future, and you've seen a lot of that this morning, how to lead change once you've got that vision, and how to develop yourself uh, professionally, both for your personal goals as, a, as well as within your organization. So those three ideas are still embedded in the program. But over time, we have changed things. Um, I'll talk a, few, a little bit about those changes and how they might affect you personally, actually. Um, there's, there's some brand new curriculum and some new faculty involved. Um, I started digging up some pictures of the new faculty. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay, no, that's not the new, fa so, so this actually, this represents something. This represents another part of it, which is our efforts to continually um, improve all the courses in the program. So we'll talk specifically about new courses today, but um, all the courses undergo revisions every year. So as an example, um, in the ops class, there's now a, an exercise involving potato heads. I, I, I piloted it on the last class, I, and I'm hoping it goes, it goes as well as it did uh, that time. Yeah, yeah, okay, it was a good, is it a keeper? It's a keeper, okay. All right, thank you guys, I love the table. Okay. <laughs> But, but I want to emphasize, with all this new stuff, um, the alumni are welcome to, if you want, audit online courses. So if a new course comes out, you want to give it a shot. If you want to refresh an old course, feel free to contact Beth and we'll sign you up to be um, uh, a lurker online and, and participate that way. Um, there are, are also, every few months, um, virtual seminars, or, or Ellen calls them virtual grand rounds, that allow you to listen in on a lot of what's going on in the program as well. We get faculty to speak, we get alumni to speak, and you'll get a sense of, of what's going on as well. So now I'm going to get to some of the, the, the new courses um, and the new people involved. So one person who was brought in for the first time uh, last year, so the, the class of 18 were the first people to have Judith White. Um, Judith is a psychologist and researcher on um, things like implicit bias, um, and she um, developed a new course called um, Aligning People in Teams, which is really um, using applied psychology to understand human motivation and um, how humans, people, um, interact with organizational goals. Judith is, I don't know if you, if, if, when you meet her, it's a little freaky. It feels like something, like sometimes she understands your underlying motivation so well that she knows what you're going to say before you say it. Um, and she's a real, she's a master at understanding how people tick and how they work. So she really brings the research down into how compensation works, um, how you might do job design, how you might communication change, how, how you might communicate change strategies and things like that. So she's been a wonderful addition to the program. If you're interested in APT, um, let Beth know and, and you can um, go through the next the next go around. Um, a new faculty member um, is Gail Ayala Taylor from the Tuck School. Um, she um, it took over for Poonam Keller. Uh, Poonam was, was elevated to the dean's office and could no longer, she's very sad, she could no longer teach in the program. Um, Gail took over. Gail um, was a, 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 the first go around last, last, uh, last uh, year as well. Um, she is a marketing professional with a background actually in the hospitality industry. So she really takes a unique perspective on customer service um, into healthcare. Um, she thinks of healthcare and services and marketing in particular as sort of a holistic thing that interacts very strongly, especially with operations. So Galen and I work, work very well uh, on that together, um, and uh, as well as on human resources. Um, she actually is very interested in what she calls marketing to the internal customer, a topic that came up a lot in the last, um, in the last panel. How do you uh, market what you're doing to within your organization as well as externally? So that's something that she, she focuses on as well. So those are sort of some of the things that are developed 
developing from the tux side. Um, Ellen's going to take over and talk a little bit about sure. TDI. All right, thank you. So, uh, Professor Glenn Elwin has uh, started with a module co-producing healthcare. So we did have shared decision making as a mini course, um, and this is really sort of replacing that as our efforts around patient engagement. We decided that uh, you know shared decision making was a was a more novel idea when we started the program, and things uh, and thinking have advanced. And Glenn Ellen is an uh, excellent person to to add to this. Um, Glenn, along with a, a whole cadre of other faculty and researchers at TDI spends a lot of time thinking about, um, you know, how do you how do you get the patient back involved in healthcare? Um, uh, he, this work takes a lot of different forms, thinking about different measures of things. But what he tried to do in this module was to think about it from the standpoint that you all are coming at. A very small number of you will be doing this. Um, shared decision making at sort of the patient provider dyad level. So he was trying to give a framework about how you might think about this in an organization. Um, but during this, this module, it covers topics of patient engagement, shared decision making, and uh, motivational interviewing. And again, it's sort of just trying to bring this up to the organizational level. We are planning to build this out somewhat, so stay tuned because we, there are actually a number of really amazing folks around Dartmouth doing this work in the trenches in areas of palliative care, some really fabulous models around Crohn's disease, cystic fibrosis, and I think they can come and, and really uh, fill out this work and, and examples of how that works, as well as I know some of you in the program have quite a bit of experience here. So stay tuned for more in this area. Um, we also, the course, Effective IT for Healthcare Orgs, has somebody new, Mark Frisse, Dr. Mark Frisse from Vanderbilt Medical Center. So he actually is a professor of biomedical informatics at Vanderbilt. Um, we reached out to Mark because his expertise really seemed perfect for the program. And in addition to being an MD, having a degree in computer science, uh, he also spent time in leadership roles at Express Scripts and, and all of his time at, at Vanderbilt. Um, and he's been a, a wonderful and energetic addition to the program. He worked very hard with Addy and Anno to develop a new version of this course. Uh, and uh, he really is viewing things, he, you know, he talks a lot about the fact that data and information are not the same things. And there's, you know, tremendous complexity in healthcare and information technology can both reduce it, but it can create it. And so he really tries to sort of pinpoint this at all different levels. So from the patient level, what are emerging technologies and what are sort of the opportunities there? Obviously, there's the promise and pitfalls of EHRs, but no, he will not let you wallow in your frustration with the EHR. He's going to really talk about, um, you know, what it, is, what it is that you can take from these and what you can learn. There's a lot of time spent on measurement and reporting, of course, and then data analytics, which involves a discussion of, you know, what is big data as opposed to just data analytics, how organizations have been using these, you know, successfully and otherwise. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, again, the 2018s were the, were the test case, but I think this was, has been a really uh, great addition to our program. The course was really well received. So the other thing we wanted to highlight, some of you, in fact, I think most of you, if not all of you, have... Um, gone through the rethink simulation, right? And this is sort of a whole system exercise to explore what you need to create healthy communities. This used to come at the end of the program. It's been an aha moment for people when you sort of realize what's going on in and outside the healthcare system that needs to change. So we've moved it up. And one of the ways, and, and you know, one of the great things about this program when you need to make room for something new, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Because there's lots of great stuff. Um, so, uh, with the help of Eric, Addy, and Anno, uh, we have turned this into an online uh, experience. And in fact, that actually was, I think, a, a very big success because it gave people a little bit more time to sit with that material, think about that material, um, and take those uh, messages away. And it also puts it a little earlier in the program where I think people can uh, use it more, more effectively to their advantage. So that's another thing that has changed. Um, strategy, uh, the strategy course has changed and we have Connie Helfa of Tech, Tuck 
um, teaching that. And Connie is really a super person to be teaching this. She um, is the Brian Quinn Professor in Technology and Strategy at the Tuck School. And she's a fellow in the Strategic Management Society, um, has a, a number of awards. She's um, an editor in the um, uh, Strategic Management Journal, as well as other you know, editorial responsibilities. And in her work, you know, she's really trying to meet all of you where you are in your organizations, thinking about the goals of your organization. What's the value proposition in your organization? Um, the, the scope, the source, your advantages. Um, and Connie's background has been uh, uh, less so in healthcare. So Eric Wadsworth, who, who many of you know well, um, is has been helping to teach pieces of strategy for a while. And this kind of gets me to uh, my next area, which is that Eric will continue to do some of the healthcare cases. So one of the exciting new things is a, a new case, and again, there are new cases being written for MHCDS all the time, but the Bay State Health case is near and dear to my heart because Eric Wadsworth and I and a, and a fellow named Jermaine Heath worked together this past summer to work on this case, sort of looking at this transition that the Bay State Health System went through. And this involved um, prominently Evan Benjamin and Jennifer Endicott. So we, you know, we love it. We love to involve the um, alums. You all have amazing experience to give to this program and teach to us and each other. Uh, and so that's been fun. And this is a case that is used in more than one course. It, it is used in health uh, economics and policy, but also in strategy. So. Um, so with that, you know, I just want to emphasize this involvement of all of you is amazing. It's what makes this program tick, I think, in many ways. So please keep giving us your thoughts, your suggestions. And um, by the way, this is really just a sneak peek. We have more cooking. You know, we're working on changes all the time in response to lots of the, the great feedback you've all given. So stay tuned. We'll try to keep you updated on um, further changes. But it's been a lot of fun to think about this. So thanks so much. <laughs>